when you talk to the patient and um, understand what they're facing, um, it's very important to try and define what goals do we have with treatment and when is the most appropriate time to start treatment. Uh, obviously, um, we've seen patients with CLL who are in their 20s, it's not usual. Uh, the average age of onset is in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, however, we see a full spectrum. And obviously, uh, younger patients who can tolerate uh, more intensive chemotherapy um, may be able to achieve a complete response with eradication of the leukemia. And this is attractive because after having a course of therapy of four to six months, they may be free of their disease and put it in the rear view mirror and have improvements in their blood counts and not have to deal with having to take continuous therapy. So that's attractive to some patients um, who are younger and fitter uh, who do not have uh, markers which would indicate that they would have a poor response to chemotherapy. And I mentioned one of those is deletion in chromosome 17. So uh, obviously if they have that, uh, I would probably advise them to steer clear of a chemotherapy-based regimen. Um, I mentioned also the distinction between leukemia cells that have antibody genes that are mutated versus non-mutated. And we know that patients who are having leukemia cells that have unmutated antibody genes, uh, they typically, even if they have a stellar response to treatment, may tend to recur uh, within a few years after treatment. And you'd like to get, you know, good bang for your buck in going through the chemoimmunotherapy regimen. Those patients who have done completely very well with the chemoimmunotherapy regimen uh, being younger in age uh, typically have leukemia cells that have mutated antibody genes and have a lower uh, amount of a protein called beta-2 microglobulin in their blood. So those patients in particular seem to fare pretty well. Um, and so stratifying patients to receive a chemoimmunotherapy regimen who wish to maybe put the disease in the rearview mirror and go on with their lives without having to take continuous therapy, it's a good choice. Now, if a patient's in their 80s or 90s, um, it may not be worth uh, consideration to try and get the disease so much into remission if they have to go through therapy that's going to end up ending their lives. And you have to be careful. Uh, we have to be mindful of the limitations and how well patients can tolerate uh, these regimens. And as we get older, just like having our knees, we can't play contact sports anymore. Uh, we have to be mindful of age limitations and comorbidities that will influence our ability to take one therapy or the other. So the ability to take uh, very intensive therapy will decline over time. Plus the patients may want to have their disease controlled uh, so they can be with their grandkids and what have you. And, um, and with the uh, advent of these newer therapies, it's possible to control the disease and to keep it at bay. Uh, it may not give us a complete response that allows us to stop therapy altogether. However, uh, if the therapy is well tolerated and they are not having complications from their leukemia, that may be a favorable outcome for some patients. So discussing that with the patients uh, to try and define what are their objectives with treatment. Uh, and even younger patients may opt for that too if they are um, not so inclined to try and uh, get into what may be considered like a home run with chemoimmunotherapy.